There we go. We got the music rolling. We're ready for the show. I'm going to uh, turn that music up a little bit and then back down off. And now we're ready to start the show. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to people around the world. This is your host of the DB2 Night Show, Martin Hubel. And we are up to 123 shows for the DB2 on Z platform. And our special guest is once again, Patrick Bossman. Uh, who works in DevOps in Santa, uh, Silicon Valley. I was going to call it Santa Teresa. That's showing my age again. Silicon Valley Lab. Uh, how are you doing, Patrick? I'm doing great. And you're in the hey. so, you're in the southeast office of the, of, uh, of SVL today. I know that you're down in Florida, suffering through cold weather where you have to wear long sleeves, as we do up here. But our temperature is about oh, I want to say about 60 degrees colder than yours. There we go. It's very chilly down here. I'm I'm with you in spirit. Yeah, in spirit. Yeah. Well, we uh, we got dumped on 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 Monday, and I should be showing pictures of the handle of my snowblower in a snowdrift. Uh, I've cleared a path. But the snow is so high on each side, all you can see is a handle. You can't actually see the machine, and that that happened again to us on Monday. So it's made it less than fun up here. But moving along, let's get the uh, let's get the formalities out of the way so we can get on the good stuff as always here's our uh, social page uh, the replays on YouTube are becoming more and more popular I'm noticing we have at least uh, uh, 50 to 100 people each week looking at YouTube of course the downloads are always available because we like to uh, not only move forward but we've also learned about downwards or upwards compatibility and, and keeping things available as we've always done on the mainframe going back to the IBM 360 days. My goodness, yes, I started on IBM 360. Here's our disclaimer. I did actually update the date this week. We're now 2022. Uh, copyright. Uh, we'll make uh, replay available afterwards, and uh, you can certainly download or listen to that on YouTube. And uh, Patrick has also uh, graciously agreed to make his uh, handout available, and that will also be available on the replay blog. And we respect all the trademarks various companies that are, as always, our quick announcements are things like that. We have our uh, February 11th show uh, coming up next uh, next month with Piotr Mirsajewski of the uh, uh, DB2 Toronto or the IBM Toronto lab. Uh, and he's going to have a lot, a lot to say. And I noticed that someone had picked up already that on this slide, it says DB2 V12. Oh my goodness. It seemed like I announced something there, but um, uh, Piotr will uh, share the details with, with us. And uh, on March 11th, we have uh, Jim Bean of Cigna coming back with his techniques for optimal performance. Part two, uh, when a guy shows up with a slide deck of, of 90 slides, you kind of uh, want to break Ooh. it down. And uh, so uh, we kind of agreed early on, rather than trying to uh, plow through 90 slides, we'd make it a part two. and. Uh, so he did part one, and we'll be doing part two when he's back in March. On the Z side, we have uh, Hakan Roberts, who's going to give a, a DB2 utilities update. Apparently, there's been enough updates to utilities. They felt it was really important to do this update uh, kind of ASAP, knowing that there might be a, a V next coming out on the, on the Z side later on in the year. And I've also had some other conversations about some things that might be happening. And uh, so uh, DB2 Night's show will be something very interesting for you as uh, as the year progresses. March 18, uh, we've got Mike, Michael Cotignola of the of BMC Software. He's got a different type of title here, but it's kind of the things he could, re uh, wish he could remember when he needs to do something type thing. And he'll be presenting that on March 18th and uh, on April 22nd or May 20th. Cheryl Larson will be back with us as well with, uh, uh, with kind of the, the old uh, negative approach of things you don't want to do because we don't want DB2 to go slow. We'll be uh, firming up that date just as I, I get hear back from a couple of other speakers and we'll likely finish the, uh, the Z side and the LUW side with more IBM content because people love to hear from the lab. As always, our primary and founding sponsor of the DB2 Night Show is DBI Software. And I encourage you, if, 
uh, should you have interest in VB2 LUW performance, to look at the uh, links they have on their homepage, uh, where you can follow and see a demo. And uh, that's always a good thing to do if you've got the time and the interest. Uh, our winner from last show was Jeremy Vaughn of Unum. He's won an Amazon gift certificate, which has been uh, duly sent to him. And we thank Jeremy for watching. And it does pay to watch the DB2 Night Show because we, we do award winners. And our sponsors are DBI again, and yours truly, Martin Hubel Consulting. We're happy to bring the show to you as, in support of the DB2 community. Seeing as this is a uh, a DB2 on Z. Uh, we will not be doing demos, demos or having a commercial break once Patrick gets going. Uh, we don't uh, uh, see that that's a good use of your time. We just like you to know that that uh, DBI makes this show possible, and we are grateful to their their interest in, in supporting the community. Now we're into our polling questions already. So here we go. Uh, first polling question. And uh, we'll launch this one. What's the newest version of DB2 that you run? And uh, uh, I've made it a habit over the last few shows to uh, talk to folks about uh, where the breakpoint is and various function levels. And I think we're up to 507 or 508 now. And Patrick and I were discussing this. And uh, 503 is apparently uh, the important one because that's when you have to run your cat main, cat main, which means you're kind of at a point of no return. And so it's good to see as it looks as people vote now we're up to about 75 percent of our audience voting and let's um, close that and share that result with folks nice so we are getting people onto the new uh, the latest and greatest and that's always a good thing it's a uh, i uh, as i like to say the uh, people that are lagging behind not not aren't necessarily slow uh, often it's because they are so invested in DB2, it's it's hard to move forward sometimes without to and making sure that everything's going to work appropriately. I, I would put money on a majority of the uh, 100, 500, but it's all 100. <laughs> yeah, I would think so. But uh, all right, moving along, our next one. Oh, I think I uh, I can launch this now. Which of the following commercial DVMSs do you use? And I kind of changed this out. You can vote on everything. I'm assuming a lot of people on the DB2 Night Show are using DB2 LUW because that's how you would find out about the show. But uh, the other uh, other uh, mainframe databases and stuff like that, we always seem to have some loyal IMS users. And I had an IMS vendor. Since it is a DB2 for the OS session, we're making an assumption that 100% are uh, using. Well, <laughs> I'm assuming if they're here, they want to hear right. it. Let's see. That was <laughs> if not, you're welcome. Thank you for coming. Yeah. 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 And, uh, and, and by the way, we're also, uh, you know, we don't have Tupperware on there either. <laughs> and, uh, oh, we talked about that last night. Oh, uh, yeah. We can uh, have a little bit of fun with this. And, we don't. We. I normally used to have a cartoon in here, but uh, I. Uh, uh, I decided at the last minute I wouldn't show more pictures of my uh, poor co-host co Charles Charlie, who has unfortunately gone across the Rainbow Bridge to live on a farm. We're really sad about that. He was a good little guy, and. Uh, and yeah, I think I showed that one, or did I? That's what we have. Okay. Gives us an idea. And uh, we were very sad right after Christmas. Uh, Charlie had took it. Uh, we, we felt his time was uh, nearing, but uh, just after uh, Christmas, he uh, did pass on. And so now we're looking to see what, whether or not we'll take another rescue or, or what we're going to do. But for now, I think we're just going to uh, be in mourning for a short period of time and, and see where things are. Here's another question. Uh, where where are you in your career? Uh, do you consider yourself a recent graduate, early, uh, mid or late career? And, uh, and uh, this is also uh, a sign of things and, and where things are. And we'd like to see some more young people get along, but uh, sometimes it doesn't appear that that's the case. So we've had 75% of our audience vote quickly on that. Thanks for voting quickly. And it seems that 
Everyone, wow. Everybody's getting old. Now, I didn't define what mid and late career were. Uh, I can tell you I'm personally in the 95% range myself. So, uh, but that's uh, both, both uh, it's nice to be amongst my own kind, but it's also would be nicer if we had more people that were uh, uh, coming in as youngsters as well. Keep this wonderful technology alive and growing. Here's your, uh, your, uh, 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 what's your main role here? We've got, uh, uh, I guess you could be both a developer and a writing your own stored procedures, but I figured if you're going to write stored procedures, you, you probably would uh, note that separate from that. But uh, as typical with our audience here, we are mainly a, a group of DBAs and technical people. It's a gray area, the stored procedure land. It is, yeah. Some people called it a, a, a procedural DBA at one point, was an, a term put to that by uh, uh, our friend Craig Mullins. And uh, that certainly uh, is a term that can be used. Uh, it's also, uh, do you call them a DBA or do you call them a developer? I, I went with the term database developer, and you can see that uh, uh, we're all technical people here today. That's just fine. and. Uh, there weren't any choices for technical people. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. <laughs> I I went through the number of uh, IDUG sessions where I've I've never attended an IDUG uh, conference where I didn't present, and I, I'm I think I'm at the uh, uh, in terms of the number of IDUG events I've presented at, I'm at about sixty. This is uh, pretty scary in its own way. Proving developer agility is important. Uh, this is an interesting one. Uh, we've got enough votes there. We'll close that and share the results. 80% say yes, 10% say no, and 10% say don't know. That's interesting to see. And uh, we have one last question here, which is, where are you in the adoption of continuous availability and that sort of thing? And, uh, Uh, another uh, uh, question. That's all, again, another one of these uh, interesting answers as people flow in and, and uh, give their opinion here. And we'll close that. We're up to the 80% mark, which seems to be where people are voting today. And a good wow. point. That's good to see. 60% are well. Do you have the, the numbers from the last time you asked that? Uh, you know, I'd have to go back and check, but uh, that would be, uh, I, I do have okay. that data available, but uh, not something where I'd be able to throw it up quickly. But uh, Right. We'll, we'll talk about that when we're done, because I think that's a huge difference. It looks, It's looking a lot better, isn't it? It's looking a lot better. It was better. like what, two years ago that we asked that? Yeah, I think, we, yeah, that question was in there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I, I think so was, it in the fall of uh, 2019, so that's two years ago. Yeah. Yeah. So we have that data available. I, I, nice. I've got it in a spreadsheet that wouldn't be really super easy to see, but uh, we certainly can make that available. So with that, I think that's the end of our polling questions. The last one, of course, being our big one is, did you learn something? And we'll ask that at the end after people have had a chance right. to learn. Okay. Um, We'll um, I'll move on. Uh, just mentioning that there is a no commercial other than to say thanks to DBI. And with that, we'll turn it over to you, Patrick. I'm going to uh, all right over here. So uh, I'm looking for the option. There we go. It gave yep. me a, a yep. nice. Is that does it look good? Can you see it? Does it? look good. Yeah, we're all right. We're on. We're watching you. All right. And, uh, so. Um, uh, thank you for the intro. And I, first of all, I really love the, you know, it's Friday. And uh, this is, for me, this is like conversational format. I really enjoy it. And I hope everybody um, enjoys it. Um, I'm Patrick Bossman, Senior Technical Staff Member for db 2 for GOS. Um, my, I have a 
extremely deep knowledge of query optimization. It's my started out as a as a developer, and then I did uh, direct marketing. So I would send you junk mail, and so I really cut my teeth with DB2 um, in the query optimization space. Came from customer, joined the lab, traveled the world, put the fires out, stuff like that, and then moved into development. Um, and then a couple of years ago, it's now like four years ago, I think. It's been a long time. I moved into what we now call transformation. And that's um, how do we uh, provide capabilities so that the platform can thrive and the next generation of creators. And by that, I mean anybody who has anything to do with making these systems run from a developer to a systems programmer, storage admin, I don't care. You know, you're you're not a user. You're not like, well, maybe you are, you know, you go to the ATM, and take your money out and use our system, swipe your, your credit card, you're using our system. Well, maybe the other is a user. But what I mean by creator is somehow you make the system run. How can we, you know, provide technology that the next generation, um, we can reduce getting started is the first barrier, right? That they that they can can contribute valuably to the organization as quickly as possible. And I think once you knock those barriers down, people are very comfortable. You know, nobody wants to feel like they're not productive. And so that's kind of the first, you know, area. And then just how can we make these systems more self-managing, self-tuning? So that's, I still, my, my responsibilities are broad now. I used to just do query optimization, and now I would say I, I look all across the board. It's a little awkward. You know, you never get used to doing that change in your career. And, but but that's that's the way it is. So I'll I'll take any questions. People want to ask where the product's going, how we're addressing that. I I'll take anything. Um, and if I don't know the answer, then I know who to refer to. So that's fine. Um, what are we going to talk about today? The Data Studio and DSM strategic replacement update. I I start this off by saying I'm not announcing end of life. There's product management and official. Um, mechanisms to deliver that message and and when whenever that happens it'll be communicated through the official channels but it's important for us to say the products the offerings that will replace those things exist today and the the race to bring the features what i call um, replacement viability where we get enough features that you know 25, 50, 75, 100% of people can adopt. That race is on. And, and uh, for the developer side of things, I'd say we're nearing the end. Um, for the administrator side, we're still early. And But I'm going to talk, that's what this session is about today. How you, here are the things that are going to replace those things and give you a, a look at what where they are, where these you know offerings are and their maturity. Um, and encourage you to install them and use them and start start giving us feedback on it. Um, all right. Let's see. Just, um, disclaimer, one of the things, and I really want to highlight this one, statements regarding IBM's future direction and intent are subject to change or withdrawal without notice and represent the Olson objectives on lawyers. But in this session, I cover some forward thinking things and um, we have changed our plans. And in some cases, that's why I just want you to be aware of that. But a lot of the stuff that I'll talk about is really, it's, it's, it's coming is, it's, you know, you can kind of see our roadmap and, and we've stayed pretty true to it, but it is subject to change. And sometimes it changes because you shape uh, what we choose to focus on with your feedback, which is so I do encourage people to kind of need to change my copyright calendar has rolled. All right, um, I'll give you an overview. We'll talk about and show some things about developers. And I know we have a lot of DBA systems programmers, but your the the what tools a developer uses and what tools a DBA use are different. 
And so I'm, I'd like you to know what, what we've done for developers. And when you know that your developers out there are using certain things and you see it's available, please, you know, communicate to them, say, hey, you should check this out, right? Um, and then after developers, I'll cover the administrative side of things. All right, um, kind of mentioned this, so I won't spend a lot of time on it, but probably the top one. Increased developer and administrator talent pool, right? Uh, of all of these people building all of these things, we want to bring DB2 to them and make them uh, maintain, support, enhance the solutions that use the mainframe. Uh, and reduce the domain Z domain specific skills and tools required to work with DB2. Doesn't mean you're never gonna use ISPF. Lots of things can only be done through ISPF, even now. Um, but a lot of people don't really, you know, if you're writing distributed applications that use DDF, you could get by with maybe almost never logging into the mainframe directly through ISPF and never TSO probably possible. People probably do it. Maybe they don't even recognize it. But even for, um, you know, we want to increase the number of people that can, you know, support and develop and create an administrative tool on DB2 for ZOS. Right. All right. So I'm going to skip three kind of pillars, you know, developer, and this is kind of an all-encompassing one. If we have legacy code, Java code, well, PL1, and we have new code, um, Python runs on Z. Um, you know, if you use DB2 native REST services, Java, Python, JavaScript, Node.js, which is a which is JavaScript on server side, um, Go, all the you know all the languages that use REST can now access DB2. They don't even know they're talking to a database. So these are users of mainframe DB2. And they're all um, developers. New other things, Ansible, you know, Docker. People use a variety of technologies, and we want them to also use the mainframe. We don't want to be, you know, only people running working on the mainframe, touch the mainframe. Those days are gone. Um, DBA administrator, uh, design databases, explain, analyze, tune, browse statement cache, run SQL. This is probably the bulk of our community that's on the phone right um, and release engineer we're talking about agility um, if we look back everybody's late like career so you're you know this is the person that does compile and get it fine right they build the jobs to be able to deploy applications but the way people are deploying applications is also undergoing a transformation um, the applications tend to be multi-platform and this particular role, which has always existed, um, but it now what people would like to be able to do is have a one-click deployment that does everything from pushing the app to the app store, you know, pushing whatever changes to the web server or the gateways or the application servers, as well as whatever backend changes, which could be store procedures, functions, adding columns to tables, new tables, you know, try and automate all of that through a single push. This person is not an expert on every nuance of deploying applications. They tend to be an expert on the pipeline itself and how to, how to stitch processes together. And they work with DBAs and um, you know, the people that know the application pieces to build those processes and make them resilient. But they're now a player, right? They've always been here, but now automation is key. All right. Um, strategic solutions. The, the legacy solutions, the stuff built in Eclipse, Data Studio, uh, DSM, that stuff was tightly bound. Oh, yeah. Don't want to get logged out of my other session. The, the, the old solutions were tightly bound um, and and so the next generation in Eclipse itself, the next generation we're refactoring the code into microservices. So basically there's a, for the tuning services, which will be released last year, there's a Java web server sitting on ZOS and Unix system services. And it's REST enabled, visual explain, statistics advisor and additional tuning services are coming. 
but you don't have to, they're not tied to Eclipse. Um, they're, they're independent. The developer extension, which we released in July 2020, it was the first version that we released of the developer extension. We have, um, there's something called language server protocol and debug adapter protocol that were introduced with VS code, but there you, so you write a language server once, you write your debug adapter protocol once and any editor IDE that supports language server protocol or debug adapter protocol, we can plug our extension into. And so VS code, Eclipsea, IDZ is taking our developer extension and integrating it into IDZ to provide Eclipse rich client, um, you know, developer capabilities that I'll show you. And so we've taken the part of our transformation is refactoring the key functional capabilities that are important to developers and administrators and writing them in a way that we can integrate them into the popular platforms that are being used today. But we're also in a sense future proofing in that if you know, if it's not VS code, if some other editor comes in and does something incredibly better, then we should be able to plug into that without rewriting everything, right? That, so we're getting a lot of flexibility um, through this refactoring as well. For same thing for the administration side of things, I'll show you um, at the foundation towards the end, built on REST APIs that are running on ZOS in Unix system services and so the capabilities that are surfaced through the browser can also be called through automation that the customers write themselves. And so um, it's really allowing people to, to take advantage of some of the building blocks that we're using to deliver a solution. If you find them useful in an automated way for yourself, you, you can reuse those components and we can reuse them in other solutions that we want to compose. Um, so, so it takes us a while to do this refactoring, but it pays off, right? So it'll pay off through, uh, we'll be faster as we go forward and we'll have a lot more flexibility. All right, so that's just a you know, principle there. Let me jump in. Um, developer extension, um, let me, I'm gonna jump ahead for a second and show the, the, the roadmap and then I'm gonna jump into the demo. In July, 2020, uh, we, went generally available with the developer extension, very basic feature, syntax highlighting uh, snippets, which basically, I'll show you, but it's chunks of code. So you start typing a, a create procedure command and it'll give you valid syntax sample and you can just change it. So that makes the developer faster. Um, syntax checking, code completion, to connect to DB2, so the initial you didn't even need, you couldn't connect the DB2, but it made things pretty, right? And it made you a little more efficient. Well, then, you know, just a couple months later, connect the DB2, run SQL, um, JDBC trace, the property settings. Next big delivery, store procedure debug, native store procedure debug, um, February. Uh, so that's been available for quite a while now. Format SQL, embedded SQL execution, um, and every, everywhere along the way, I've deleted little minor releases that we've had, but this used to, this slide is getting really full. We've had, you know, we deliver a big release and then the next month there's stuff that people asked us for that was very simple. And so we would react to what customers told us. And so I, that's why I really want to encourage people to download, use, and, and tell us things. Because sometimes if they're, if they're cheap and easy, and improve your quality of life, we will prioritize those things. Um, just this past September, uh, no charge tuning services integration. Um, and the thing that we're working on right now, there's gonna be a bit of a pause. Um, we might have some quality of life improvements that come along, um, but the, the fee-based tuning services integration like index advisor, uh, query rewrite advisor, those things are under construction after that catalog navigation. And then I would say we're into um, reacting to the priorities that our user base requests from us. Um, so, you, you know, we're pretty far along on this roadmap. Um, and the, the tuning services 
the paid tuning services, this stuff is the bulk of 2022 right here. I, I think that it'll be towards the end of the year. Maybe we flow it a little bit into the next year. I don't know. Um, but this is the forward looking stuff that we're working on. So let me drop out of this real quick. Whoops. All right. And find my editor. We'll give you uh, a quick peek. Um, all right. So this is Visual Studio Code. It's open source. It, um, IBM did not write the editor. Um, it was uh, written by Microsoft and uh, open source, so anybody can change VS Code. Um, there is the, the extension is no charge. The store, there's extensions. Most people search right in here. So uh, IBM db 2 and you could see our developer extension right here. And then they could just, I could uninstall it, but if I had, did not have it installed, I would just click install. The what information about it is embedded in the, in the extension itself. You can also go to the repository if you have um, enhancement recommendations or uh, bugs. You can go to the repository, open an issue in GitHub, and we're, we're totally in the open. We have a lot of customers that are even talking to each other about what they'd like to see in the GitHub. It's really nice. Um, the, there's some Java setup that has to be done, and some the, the JDBC uh, license. Um, so that, that's all described in here. All right. Um, the extension that I used with it, IBM Z Open Editor, this contains PL1, COBOL, REX, um, shoot, assembler, yeah, assembler, right? So you can also, these are the ones that IBM provides, these are mainframe related. This is not just a mainframe, um, it, actually it was built for you know, any language left. people right using Java, Ansible playbooks get written in here, um, C, COBOL, Python, uh, shoot, I think there were probably over 30,000 extensions for Visual Studio Code. It's used because it's lightweight um, and it has a rich set of extensions that people are using to, to be able to do, you know, their job. Really, and so now DB2 for CRS is in here. Something that's not, um, it is DB2 related, but we didn't provide it, Zoe, there's a Zoe extension. And this is the, when I click on it, there's Zoe. Um, so we can look at here are my data sets, right? I'm gonna be embarrassed. I haven't checked if what SQL is in here. All right, so we can see my SQL is right here. Uh, I don't have, my extension set up to recognize this. I should change that, but that should get highlighting on it. Um, so, but you can navigate your data sets through, right through Visual Studio Code. You can, this is Unix System Services. Trying to see if I have anything that's, uh, where's my Python? Rex, here we go. Here's some recs that I wrote. This uh, will tell you what DB2s are active, but you can see nice syntax highlighting. And if I change this, it'll I can save it and it saves it on the mainframe. This is actually copied the file down and it will sync it with the mainframe. So you can modify Unix system services files. Um, and then down here, I, the jobs is uh, Jazz, Jazz Explorer. And I, I, you can look at your own jobs, but as a, since you're all DBAs, you know, you'll know and appreciate the master address space. Um, you want to get the connection information. There we go. Um, but right from the, the IDE, you can also, you know, do some things straight, look around, navigate around COS itself. These were things that are not provided by the developer extension, but just want you to get a picture of the whole ecosystem that's available. All right, so let me close this. So, um, this is the Explorer, and so these are this is all my stuff, right? And and I have a lot of stuff. There's there's just a ridiculous amount of stuff here. 
But so here's a, you can see the syntax highlighting, right? You get some, some pretty, let me create a syntax error. Now you can see, hey, this is wrong. And it's expecting to select the syntax checking. Um, if I make this a little bit ugly, you know, try and change the formatting. I, you know, sometimes you copy and paste the SQL and there's actually, it's just a blob. You can deform that document and I'll snap it back into space. Oh, I have a syntax error used there. Um, but if this was just a mass of unrecognizable text, it would snap it to make it put this pretty. Um, I can highlight the SQL and run the select SQL. Uh, I guess I timed out here. All right, so run it. Let's run it now. I set everything up this morning and then I, I waited too long. There we go. So you can see the output here. I can save it. Um, next thing we want to do is tune it. So we'll run Visual Explain. So I'm a dummy. I have run run stats against my catalog. So if I can run Stats Advisor, but it has no recommendations on this statement. So Stats Advisor is identical to you know what you know and love from Data Studio and DSM. Um, but I tested it this morning and I don't have one that generates any recommendations. So I apologize for that. But we got a lot of ground to cover. So all right. Visual explain, double click on this. I'm gonna launch my window here somewhere. Now I gotta find retrieving results. All right. And um, see, we have got visual explain, which is, uh, you know, see the, the tables, all of the, you know, the descriptor on the right hand side. So basically we've brought um, visual explain directly into uh, Visual Studio Code. Um, and the other thing that you'll see, I'm just trying to give you a feel for how things, if I right click here, um, and in the future, as we add additional tuning services like Index Advisor, Query Rewrite Advisor, you can just see there'll be additional tuning options that will pop up. Um, so uh, the other thing, and I don't have time to go into this while also covering other topics, the Store Procedure Debug uh, is available in here. Um, and, you know, there's a, a, you know, it's been over a year since, about a year since we delivered that. So there's a, you know, you can get that up and running and see that. But the the debug looks exactly like debug for other um, use within the editor. All right, so I'm going to pause for a minute. That's about all I wanted to show. Well, post right in back here and show a couple other things. Uh, where's the C code? Sample C. So we've got SQL that's within the C application we will recognize um, that this is SQL and you can run it um, or you can tune it, right? So the SQL can be within another embedded application and we'll still, you'll still be able to select it and use it in your COBOL, C, PL1, Python, Java, wherever. As long as I can find the SQL statement in there, you can um, invoke our functions, the tuning functions, which will explain, you know, run the SQL. If there's a parameter, it'll prompt you for the, the parameter to enter. Um, so very nice capabilities for um, for developers. Uh, recommend they, they uh, try it out. All right. Okay, so fee-based tuning service is coming. Catalog navigation to be able to, to drop down from database name, table space, table, index, index column, views, alias, et cetera, et cetera. That these, these are the top requested features. Um, and after that, um, the roadmap will be based on additional customer feedback. Um, so what's my recommendation? Tell your developers about the developer extension, um, especially if they're using Visual Studio Code. 
Um, if they're using Visual Studio Code and they're not using this, that's kind of ridiculous, right? They should be aware of it and get a productivity enhancing thing. If they're using Data Studio, your developer is using Data Studio today. Um, if you use IDZ, then I'd recommend reaching out to IDZ and they, uh, IDZ will be integrating developer extension capabilities and they want to hear from you what are the most important features so that they deliver the features that you want as quickly as possible. Um, um, but if you're not using IDZ, then I recommend people start using Visual Studio Code, download it, get used to it. Um, it's reached a very useful state of maturity. Um, download, install, configure DB2 Accessory Suite Tuning Services. Visual Explain and Stats Advisor shipped last year, middle of last year, as uh, services in the Accessory Suite. And so you download and independently install them because they're used by Visual Explain. They're used by developer extension. That's the first thing to adopt them. But you can also invoke them via REST calls directly yourself in a CI CD pipeline. If you want to have Visual Explain as part of your code review, you don't even need the developer extension for that. You could have your pipeline call and generate Visual Explain for your SQL and have that be part of your code review that, that happens. You could get stats advisor recommendations, index advisor recommendations as part of your CSCD pipeline. And so this is part of the microservices approach of delivering things, you know, the, the building blocks independently. Um, and uh, IBM IDC intends to integrate the ZOS developer road features into IDC. All right. Any any questions on this? Um, because at this point I'm going to switch over to the administrator side of things. I don't see any questions. So I'm going to go ahead and move on. All right. You can always, you know, ask at the end as well. We do have a yes. we do have a question here for you. Can you detail okay. On an enterprise like the rollout of MS Visual Code and the developer extension, what is needed and what has to be configured where? It would be a pain in the big shop to do individual rollouts on the locked workstations of the developer. So the, the Visual Studio Code, so there's a couple approaches. Visual Studio Code is a client application, but it is also um, there is also a Red Hat code ready workspaces. There is the possibility of cloud based um, development environments, um, but that's that's a separate offering from IBM. But the, it is, yeah, the developer capabilities are, are most, for the most part, still client side. You, you know, there's, there's Eclipse, IDEZ, Data Studio, and but VS Code, VS Code is like that, installs on the client workstation. The the JDBC license is it has to be installed, and there's Java that's used. So those are the three things that that are required on the client. The, if you didn't want to put all that stuff on the client, then you're looking at a cloud-based solution, which then you're you're gonna you're gonna have some um, you know somebody else in your organization is gonna set up this cloud of, of developer environments and. And actually, what's interesting is that comes with uh, the, the workspace part of that is your own little ZOS. So I don't know if you've heard of ZDMT, uh, Z Development Test, which is an emulated ZOS in a, on a Linux, you know, container. Um, so, but that's a totally different offering. But other than that, what I the way I expect early adopters is you install Visual Studio Code on on your workstation. You, you make sure the prereqs for Java and the KVC. Uh, you could have DB2 Connect um, licensing done on the server, and so that would save you the, the licensing part on, on the client. Hopefully, hopefully that's given you a good answer to that question. If not, you know, email me after the show, and we can follow up. All right, so I'll dive right in. Um, administration Foundation. For ZOS, um, we announced this uh, in June, announced and delivered in June last year. And this is the replacement for the administrative capabilities 
of Data Studio and Data Server Manager. And it will um, consolidate those capabilities into one graphical user experience. It runs on ZLS and the, you access it through the browser or through REST APIs. Um, it's available um, at no charge. There's optional SNS. Uh, all right. And I'll get into it. I'm going to try and hurry my way into a demo here. Um, easy, intuitive search, which you'll, I think it's easier just to show you that. The, you can access the the entire DB2 catalog for all subsystems in the Sysplex that are registered in Admin Foundation. So when you do searches, if you have um, in, your, in your Sysplex, you have 10 DB2s, we can search all 10 if you if you so choose in, in the search browser. Um, the browser is based on the Zoe Virtual Desktop. So if you're familiar with using um, Mac or Windows, or Linux, then you're going to be comfortable using the Zoe desktop. You can search, uh, well, so I'm going to point out. Um, execute DB2 commands, execute SQL. We can extract the DDL for tables, indexes, individual objects, store procedures um, using the, the tool. I'll show you that. Okay. Similar to the developer extension, now these are not provided as part of foundation, but they're part of the Zoe platform if you choose to install it, which I recommend. The, the JES, MVS, you know, data set, and USS Explorer that you saw through Visual Studio Code, there are client applications for that on the Zoe desktop. So you could have a single pane of glass to, in the same desktop, be looking at those things while also doing the DB2 things you want through IBM Admin Foundation. And that's really the point is that for the creators of applications on ZOS, we want to start bringing you capabilities through this virtual desktop that make it easier for the next generation to, to get up and running and, and create and administer um, applications on DB2 for ZOS and ZOS itself. The, there's an editor. Um, you can bind and rebind with editing the bind commands, extract DDL. That's just a high, oh, and yeah, I should update this because we delivered some new capabilities. That's actually why I pushed this session into January. We've recently added the tuning services to Admin Foundation, so Visual Explain is in there. Um, and most recently, just this past December, we added statement cache. Uh, you can extract the statement cache and tune queries based on the statement cache. You can also, um, stabilize and free statements from within the catalog and there's more coming in, in this area on on you know statement cache capabilities the next one of the next things we're working on is giving you visibility into uh, stabilized dynamic more visibility in the stabilized dynamic space which by the way never made it into data studio or dsm right so we're trying to as we do this transformation, identify even you know very recent features that have come out for DB2 for ZOS and make sure we integrate those capabilities into this experience. So this is where our investment is, right? In in IBM Admin Foundation and the developer extension. This is an architecture diagram. Um, and for DBAs, you probably don't care very much about this systems programmers a lot about this. Um, this is something you install, IBM Unified Management Server for ZOS. Um, it provides the REST APIs, the discovery services, configuration. It, it, this is the bulk of the code that, that uh, gets installed, gets installed with IBM Unified Management Server. It, it, the, it's a plugin to Zoe. So all of this gets installed, and then there's a point where it registers itself with Zoe as a desktop plugin, and that will give us the icon on the desktop and launches it as an application on the desktop. So, so it does prereq Zoe, it prereqs the, the Zoe desktop. Um, we do not require the explorers, but I recommend them. Um, 
it does not use the Zoe um, command line interface at all. It, the, the, so yeah, you don't need that for this part. Um, other services, the accessory suite that I mentioned before for the developer extension, the tuning services need to be, if they're installed and available, then they get registered within um, the solution and then Visual Explain works. Um, the accelerator management, we're currently working on integrating um, IDAA administration. That's not available yet. That's um, the next uh, set of capabilities that it should be. By mid-year, there'll be significant function for IDAA administration and admin foundation. But those, so you install those separately and then the solution will, you'll, they'll be registered and integrated within the user experience. Um, so the, the admin foundation, it, you get enabled for the admin foundation. Um, DB2 DevOps experience, which was released maybe three years ago. Um, I'll, I'll give, these work seamlessly together. Uh, when you launch the IBM Unified Experience, if you're in whatever you're entitled to, those capabilities just show up and become part of the DBA for a developer. Whoever's consuming and using the platform will just seamlessly see new capabilities made available to themselves. And it's, it's, it's kind of similar to how if you had Data Studio and you were entitled to Optum Query Workload Tuner, then a whole bunch of other tuning services just kind of popped up in the solution. So I would say it's kind of similar to that, right? And that's, we're reacting to customers saying, I don't want to look at 16 different screens to do my job. Um, we're trying to bring things together here. Hopefully it's doing a good job. All right. Let me give a preview on, on the roadmap before I jump into the demo. Um, we're, we're here, right? As of December, we are, we've delivered, you know, this was all delivered in June last year, object search, SQL editor. You could see dependencies and some object operations. Um, data, you could browse your data, you could execute db2 commands, you could execute uh, bind commands. This was in June. Um, and I would say in from September and then finally in October or December, Single query tuning, statistics advisor, visual explain, SQL. I uh, can't remember if this one actually made it yet. Statement catch made it into December. That's probably the biggest feature that made it into December. And, and also better integration of the tuning services into finding queries within the catalog or, or now that we show you statement cache, launching tuning services from a context sensitive spot that, that's started to arrive. Um, just this past December. Usability enhancements, I would say, is a top item. Analytics accelerator administration, paid tuning services, and other ecosystem integrations. But the, 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 the idea here is, you know, whatever you're using to administer DB2 with IBM's investment is to bring that capability and make it available to you through you know, admin foundation um, so that you have a unified experience. And that's it. in principle, if you have questions in that regard, then I would ask you to hit me up um, after the session because that can be pretty detailed. Now I'm going to drop out and do a demo. All right. Hopefully I didn't time out. I stopped earlier. I'm like, I saw it bring up a little notification. It's going to sign me out. Um, so this is the Zoe desktop. Actually, my Mac desktop is kind of sitting in front of it. Let's see, let's see if I can move my window up. Well, there we go. That's better. So here's the IBM Unified Experience icon. Um, the, if I want to look at data sets, the MBS Explorer, Unix System Services Explorer, Jets Explorer, and you know other applications. There's um, some other system Z. I don't have them installed. If you want to do editor, uh, like Omega Mon stuff can surface through here, um, but I'm not too in touch with, with those other applications. Um, we'll launch the IBM Unified Experience. Um, 
So I, I used, you know, one of the first projects after I joined IBM, I uh, had to go address a, a company who was having career performance problems. It was an SAP application. And it was all, you know, I just basically used the statement cache to identify what to tune um, and then would tune it right from, you know, right from the application of that. All right, what do I need to do? Select profile, state cache capture. So this is the navigation bar on the left, and I just, you know, click on explore. I can explore SQL objects would be the catalog. So database, table space, table, index, stored procedure, but all the under objects and the SQL, it's looking at data sources. And now, uh, so I click capture, we have the SQL. You could tell um, if it's stabilized or not, none of these statements are stabilized. If it was stabilized, this would be yes. And the, the persistent statement ID, so the statement ID in the, the the stabilized SQL catalog table would, you know, that number would be here. So I could, if I want to stabilize this, I can do that, right? Let's just do it. Why not? Uh, DB to right? right. No, you don't let me pick it. Did I go too long? No, no, it's not. Okay, there we go. Got to create a new one. All right. So I can capture it again. See if it's done. And there we go. It is stabilized. Query number 70. Now, if I free it, um, I can free it. If I free it, it's going to leave the cache, right? Uh, because in theory, if it, it'll, what I'm saying is I want to let, I want to give this query a chance to choose a new access path. Whereas right now, if I flush the cache, recycle DB2, and rerun the workload, this query is going to come straight from, you know, we're going to load it from the cache. We're not going to go through prepare at all. Um, so if I, I, you know, I could free it, that's a new capability. You never were able to do that through DSM or Data Studio. But I'm not going to do it at this time just because uh, I don't want to eliminate it from the cache. Red and Here's a SQL statement, so I can um, I can modify it. I can explain it. Um, all right, go back to the cache. This is a statement cache view again. Tune it. Stats advisor visual explain. Same options, same tuning services that I used for the developer extension, right? And the profiles are the same. If you create your tuning profile. Um, once you've created it, it's available, that server side, it's available to both foundation and um, the developer extension. And if you're using uh, CICD pipeline to integrate, to, you know, all of the capabilities are available to whoever integrates with um, the tuning services. All right. Again, uh, Stats Advisor, I've, run, I've been a little religious on, on collecting statistics, so it's not giving me any stats recommendations. Um, so, uh, Visual Explain, as you know and love, but the context is different. For the developer extension, I'm writing queries. And as I write those queries, I can invoke the query tuning services from my workspace. As a DBA, you're looking at things that are running. So you're looking at the statement cache, you're looking at packages. Um, you're going to see additional query source integrations coming in the future. But, but the context that you're analyzing SQL is different, but the, the, some of the services you use to do your work are the same. And so we're giving you access and bringing the capabilities that you need to do your job in the context that you need to see it. We're bringing that to you. Um, we can see the SQL statement text, um, you know, basically uh, all of the stuff that you know and love from Visual Explain is, you know, brought straight into admin foundation. All right. 
So let's do a quick search. Uh, let me show you a few other things. Contains EMP object types. I have a store procedure. People are always asking me about store procedures. I also want to show that. Okay, so it looks like I'm running out of time. So I just want to quickly show you. Uh, you can extract the DDL, right? And let me go back and show you the keep package. Go to bind, uh, and we can we got the bind card here. You 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 added an index. You ran a run set. You did something to tune the query, and you want to see what the access path is for this package. I can rebind it. I don't have to actually change any bind parameters at all. You can do the rebind straight from here. Um, just really quickly for give you two commands. So display thread. Um, you know, all of the basically command processor, you all used to that. You can also run SQL to the SQL processor, right? And the explorer, so I showed you store procedures, um, but we can also, there's also, you know, all of these other, I can zero that out, apply, and you can see tables, aliases, indexes. You can see, um, let's bring up a table really quick. See the DDL for the table, um, hierarchical relationship, right? So Admin Foundation is bringing a uh, really easy to use user interface. Um, should be somebody who works in Oracle should be very comfortable coming in here and messing around with DB2, checking, you know, finding their way around DB2 for ZOS and interacting with it. Um, so this is. Uh, this is where we're at right now. We just brought a bunch of the tuning services in. There's more to come. Um, and uh, if you want to try it out, there's a Z trial available. Um, so I will provide these slides. You get you got to be ready to do it though. You get three days, right? So they create this environment for you. It's pre-installed, and you can play around with Admin Foundation. Um, and, and kick the tires. And product ordering information is available. Um, with that, um, I just want to say I appreciate your time today. Uh, and if you have any other questions, comments, concerns, uh, bossman at us.ibm.com. Um, I'm, I'm ready to you know, take any questions you have. Yeah, I've got uh, a couple of questions from Brian here. Um, he was asking after the prereqs to install this, does this require Zoe, for example, or are there other uh, uh, prereqs it, to send? So it does require Zoe. Um, and, and I would recommend the product page for IBM Admin Foundation contains the full list of prereqs that are required. Okay. Um, and, and so it does prereq Zoe, it uses Zoe desktop. Um, to get the tuning services, you have to have installed the DB2 accessory suite tuning services. If you, when we deliver IDAA administration, then you have to have certain services installed, but you're gonna have those anyway because you're running an IPA, right? So a lot of the prereqs are, other than, than Zoe and Node, some of the other prereqs are things that, that you're gonna, you know, you're gonna want, but they'll all be documented. Uh, the best place to get that is straight from the documentation. Right. Okay, um, that seems to be uh, most of the questions there. Um, let me take back control, and so I can uh, uh, just uh, do the final ending here. Make myself a presenter, show my screen. Thank you so much. And um, so the next thing I have is the final question here, which is, uh, did you learn anything today? And uh, people are looking at that now. We're getting the answers in, and we've got that in, and uh, we'll share the results. And 100% of our audience learned something, which is hardly a surprise because you're providing brand new information. So that's right. We definitely broke some news today. I'll tell you that first place for some of that information. Right. Okay. Um, just a. Uh,
just seeing what I, what did I do with those questions? Uh, another, uh, sorry. Uh, uh, last question here is why do we have DS 4.1.4? Uh, is that for a new eclipse? I, what is, I don't understand the question. I'm not you sure. Mean, so I don't. Is that Data Studio? If it's Data Studio, yeah. there uh, there was a patch release for um, to up to pick up the Eclipse version, mm -hmm. so that customers are running with IDZ mm -hmm. can run IDZ and Data Studio in the same um, Eclipse workspace. There, there's no functional enhancement. Um, Data Studio is stabilized. But that's so that's after that, um, I would say IDZ has made a statement of direction and they are integrating DB2 developer capabilities directly within IDZ. And, and it's similar to what you saw for the developer extension. They're right. not going to, you're not going to have DBAs using IDZ. No, it's, we're not going to, we're not going to put the same cache in there, you know. The administrative capabilities will go into foundation. The developer capabilities will go into the extension and IDZ. That's the that's the strategic investment. Mm. Okay. All right. Um, that wraps up our question queue for today. Um, uh, as always, um, uh, we'd like to thank you so much for doing a, a great job and for providing this information to the DB2 community. I, I know that people appreciate it. We knew that from the number of people that showed up today. So with that, I shall cue the music. Wish everyone a great weekend. And uh, we'll see you next time on the DB2 Night Show. Once again, Patrick, thank you so much for your time and uh, the information. And we all appreciate it. And we'll see you next time on the DB2 Night Show. Thank you, Martin. Thank Take you. Care. All right, bye-bye.